and numbers are rolling. Ice tea. Excuse me. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today is the 29th, 29th of April, 2024. Wow. Yesterday, on the 28th, marked 16 years. 16 years ago yesterday, the Lord broke me. <laughs> totally broke me. It was a process of breaking, but it was at that moment at Papa Murphy's Pizza on a cold concrete floor, just before I was about to open the doors. The Lord broke me. Cried out to him. I put him on the cross. He died because of me, of what I did, and there was I had no hope. I had no I had no hope. There was nothing I could do. Jesus Christ is the only chance I have. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Took my knees in the bathroom of Papa Murphy's on that cold concrete floor, man. Just bawling, snotting all over myself, crying. Cried out to him. He scared the hell out of me. Literally. Because I had no hope. I was hopeless. There was nothing I could do. <laughs> nothing. Except cry out to Lord Jesus Christ and beg him for his forgiveness. And he saved me. 16 years ago. 16 years ago. And the longer you walk with the Lord, the more humble we ought to get. But see, everything nowadays is so geared toward the youth, the younger. Okay? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, of the scriptures we're going to be reading today. Read with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay, read with me because I make mistakes. Keep an eye on me. The very familiar, well-known Ecclesiastes 11, 9, and 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou. That for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. At the end of the day, people, every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Your belief on that doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what you, if you believe that, deny that, what it doesn't. That's the fact. As it is appointed unto men once to die, and then after that, the judgment. Okay? We're all going to give account of ourselves to God. We saints at the judgment seat of Christ. Y'all who don't make it to the judgment seat of Christ, your inevitable judgment will be at the great white throne. Okay? Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart. What is the sorrow? And put away evil from thy flesh for childhood and youth. That's exactly what the world pushes at you, especially here on YouTube. Look at all these cosmetically beautiful young youngsters and stuff like that. Everything is so visually appear appealing. It's all eye candy. It's all eye candy. I was telling my wife the other day, we were talking, and it's like, you know, praise the Lord that <laughs> this is not visually appealing to anybody. Praise the Lord. Except my wife, of course. You know, no one out there sees this as visually appealing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. Okay? Praise the Lord for that. But, um... We're all going to give an account of ourself to God sooner or later. And... 
We have seen, I have seen so many examples of people who in longevity, apparently with Christ, they get this, okay, we who have walked with the Lord for a number of years, we have experience. We have things that we could give to the younger generation. Amen, amen, hallelujah. But you know what I see a lot of? People rubbing it in the others' faces. The been there, done that mentality. Now, yes, you know, having our senses exercised. Okay, we have been there, done that. But see, I see a lot of these so-called Christians. No, they are Christians. I doubt many of them are saints, but I see so many of these Christians sit back on their lees and boast well, you know. I've been doing this for years and years and years. And they have this mentality like, okay, I've done this, so now I can sit back and not take an active part or whatever. And when lightly, lightly questioned, they throw it at you in, their, in your face. Well, I've been doing this for a long time. I've done this. I've done that. I feel like Paul for all the people I led to Christ. You make me sick. And you know what? I think you make the Lord sick too. In longevity that doesn't give you the right to boast about things of your longevity at the first moment's notice, okay? Paul did that, yes, but under duress, not as a first instant with so many of these Christians that have been saved for years and years and years seem to be rubbing it into people's faces. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. Turn to Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. We're going to be reading verses 20 on to the close of the chapter. Okay? We're going to have some light expository here. Light expository. I say light because... Well, <laughs> anyway... Oh, I love my iced tea. Proverbs 29, verse 20, on to the close, which would be verse 27. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? <laughs> oh, how many of you have shot off at the mouth, huh? How many of you uh, react and then think? Or <laughs> how many of you react and don't think? Huh? <laughs> how many? Look at verse 11. A fool. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. A fool uttereth all his mind. But a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Has a little restraint. Self-governance. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. That's interesting. Now look at that verse. The fool says in his heart there is no God. Verse 11. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Huh. So right there, verse 20, seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? See, a fool uttereth all their mind, but someone who is hasty doesn't even give thought. Hmm. There is more hope of a fool than of him, this him. Go to Jude. Go to Jude. Go to Jude. Jude does not have chapters, by the way. <laughs> Jude is Jude. We want verses 8 on to verse 13. Jude 8 on to verse 13. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, 
and speak evil of dignities. Yet, now, get a load of this. Michael the Archangel. Archangel. Okay? When contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. That's, that's very telling. Okay? Satan is the anointed cherub. Michael's an archangel. And yet Michael the archangel wouldn't dare bring a, a, a railing, a, what does that say there? A railing accusation against Lucifer, Satan. Hmm. hmm. Something to think about. But you got to remember, people, Satan is not God. Okay? You got to remember that. But see, you're being told he is through Christianity. Because the Christ that is being offered to you Christians is not the Christ of Scripture. It isn't. That's Satan that Christianity is offering you. The Christ, the anointed one of Christianity, is not the Christ of Scripture. It is not. Okay? Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. This is also in Zechariah. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. Hold your place. Proverbs 29, verse 20. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. The fool uttereth all his mind. But a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Hmm. Uttereth all his mind. Versus hasty in words. Okay? Okay, are you getting that difference there? Back to Jude, verse 10. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally. As brute beasts. You lost people, especially these uh, ones who um, that uh, Proverbs 29, 20 right there is talking about. Where there's more hope of a fool than of you. The fool says in his heart there is no God. Okay? There is a form of religiosity there. Think about that. Because the fool says in his heart there is no God, but yet they have a standard which is themselves. They are their own God. But these who uttereth what this is say, seest thou a man that is hasty in his words. Hasty. Just blah, blah. Where a fool uttereth all his mind. Are you seeing the difference? But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally, unregenerate, as brute beasts, in those things which they in those things they corrupt themselves. Scripture says there's more hope of a fool of someone uh, than than this. Woe unto them, excuse me, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Koray. These are spots in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, ah, when they feast with you, either ingratiating themselves amongst you as if they are one of us, or just out there, you know, like you're at a restaurant or something. Who knows? Okay? These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, without the fear of the Lord. But you know what these guys usually do have fear of? Fear of man. Clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds. Her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Trees without fruit. Trees whose fruit withereth. Without fruit. Twice dead. Second death. 
plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, which none of them blush anymore. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Proverbs 29, verse 21. He that del delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. And of course, Proverbs 22, verse 6, right away, so, well, right away it came to mind. Proverbs 22, verse 6. How long has this been upon him as a child? Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hmm. And, and you know, let's let's read the, this context. Verses 4 on verse 6 in Proverbs 22. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares, the things of the world, thorns and snares that choke the word, okay, are in the way of the froward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Keep his soul. Dispensational difference. Under law, yeah, you are keeping your own soul by keeping the law. Okay, different dispensation. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Back to Proverbs 29. Verse 22. He that delicately bringeth... Uh, let's read 21 again. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. And this you can cross-reference with verse 27. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Now, like I told you, I think it was yesterday, brother, are you surprised that these guys are devouring one another? Are you surprised? See these Christians destroying each other uh, in their live streams and in their comment sections? Are you, are you surprised? An angry man stirreth up strife. <laughs> oh, I can th uh, think of quite a few certain individuals that do that. Okay? And a furious man aboundeth in transgression. Verse 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Proverbs 3, Proverbs 3, <laughs> verses 33 under 35. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth the habitation of the just. Surely, he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Shame. Promotion of fools. You say in your heart, you're, you're, you're your own God. <laughs> okay? And of course, go to James 4. Uh, actually, before we go to James 4, no, go to James 4, excuse me. James 4, James 4, 6 on 7, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. If you're humble, you're lowly. It's not a contradiction there, because in Proverbs it says lowly, and there it says humble. If you are of a humble spirit, you are lowly. You don't lift yourself up. You don't puff yourself up. You don't put yourself up on a high horse because you feel like Paul with all the people you've led to Christ and you have to remind people all the time and remind them, well, this is why you should do this. Give this to me. Disgusting. Okay, you talk about vanity. You talk about arrogance. Okay? God forbid. God forbid. I, I don't want to be like that. Having to 
post is like, well, I've done this, I've done that. Ah, look at me, man. Am I the only one that has a problem with that? Am I? I must be. I, I know I'm not, but I mean, some of the way that some of these, especially within the King James Bible believing realm, okay, some of the way that some of these people worship these guys, man. It's very disturbing. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. That's where it starts. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Good luck trying to resist the devil if you don't submit yourself, therefore, to God. Good luck. Good luck on that. Now go to 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5, and y'all ought to know. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. <laughs> I, I respect you as an elder, but... Oh, shut up, kid. <laughs> Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Pick your pardon. All right. All right. Now go back to... Proverbs 29, verse 24. Whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing and bereath it not. And again, I gotta go at these easy believers devils who in their live stream will use cursing and swearing and not even have a second thought about it. Not even like have a blip on their radar. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Verses 16 on to verse 19. But unto the wicked God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee, when thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceits. Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1. It's okay. A little won't hurt you. You know, you just believed and received. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Proverbs 1, 10 out of 19. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil. And make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. Yeah. They devour one another, brother. I'll never forget that troubling live stream I watched the one day. And I actually sat through it. Uh, it, was, it was basically orchestrated by that disgusting bloke. And they were all devils. And what was significant about that one was, and see, the devils don't like it that people can have memory. 
<laughs> because it's all about today, right? It's all about today. We're going to talk about that later coming up in this video. But it's all about today. You only have today. This is true. Like I said, we're going to get into that in a minute, okay? But in that live stream, there was a drunken woman, the ex-wife of an individual. And I won't badger that guy over this because he should have known better. But anyway, this woman was intoxicated in the live stream. And listening to devils trying to cohabitate peacefully um, is, wow, wow. I mean, even that, that putz uh, Tom and his two caco demon girls that he does, even that's like cringeworthy to try to listen to it, which I don't. I've, I've listened to him a little bit, but I can't stand it. But on that live stream, there was a drunken woman and the uh, proprietor of the stream, um, <laughs> like a little child, you know, yelling at this drunk woman, I'm thinking of blocking you because I can't get a word in. <laughs> and then she, I mean, this gal, she was so drunk. But see, again, the, the interaction between devils and that kind of construct was absolutely like, wow, it was cringeworthy. When saints have fellowship, especially like on a Skype or on a phone, it's a different dynamic. We're not trying to one-up each other, okay? We're not trying to exert dominance as the dominant one who's leading the thing, okay? It's a totally different dynamic. So verse 18 and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. Like we read about in the Jesuits, about how the Jesuits operate on Friday. You know, uh, amongst themselves, they trust no man. Okay? They're, I mean, these guys will turn on each other just like this. Okay? You're, you're seeing this in the comment sections of these King James Bible Christians too. And they're, and they're claiming to be the last vestige, the uh, place to run to for you Christians. And yet it's the same thing. May full of wonder. What's the problem? So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Greedy of gain. Now you think right away of this, but... Hey, popularity, a laugh, a cry, attention. Attention. And how do these guys do this? Well, that's easy. That's easy. How do they do this? Colossians chapter 2. <laughs> Colossians after 2. Verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the love of man's wisdom, and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, Catholics, after the rudiments of the whale, not after Christ. Oh, what do these people do? What do they do? Huh? Uh, Isaiah 22. These, uh, and these, these sleazy believists are the worst at this. You guys are disgusting in this regard, especially. You're disgusting overall. You, you really are. But um, right here, uh, Isaiah 22, 12 on verse 14. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, and behold. Joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. You only have, you only have today. So these guys perpetuate that off of the covetousness that you have for worldly, fleshly things. You just believe to receive. Don't worry about it. Go ahead and let you. And, and most of them. Most of them, uh, I, and I say this because uh, uh, Mr. Sunken Eye, I remember, I remember him even touching on this. He's like, 
no, you shouldn't do these things. He, even he said that. He's like, you shouldn't do these types of things. But if you do, don't worry about it. Ah don't worry about it. In other words, disregard it. No, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't. But if you do it, don't, what's the big deal? You're going to heaven anyway because you just believe. No, you're not. Why? Because you jumped over, you circumvented the cross that a lot of them preach about. The cross is death to self, first and foremost. Okay? Died. Okay? Buried and rose again. Died. Buried and rose again. Cross is death. These guys are all about the cross and the crosslessness and blah, blah, blah. But yet, they've never been there themselves. Very, very, it's full of wonder. Full of wonder. And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord of hosts. There are a lot of saints they are going to go to their grave with habits that they should not have. What else is there to say after that? Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die. You only have today, right? So live it up. Hey, you have your cake and eat it too. You just believed and received. You saved yourself by your own belief. Repentance, don't worry about that. It's going from unbelief to belief. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? All right? There's no repentance. There's no brokenness. There's no contrition. And there certainly isn't no fear of the Lord. Any fear of the Lord amongst sleazy believism. Which is an umbrella term that has infected many denominations of Christianity. Paul also reiterates this in 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 32 is the exact um, verse that we're looking for. <clears throat> Oh, let's see. Let's let's read verse 30 on to verse 32. Uh, on to verse 34. Why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Die to self. Die to the world. Die to sin. We still sin every day. Unless you're a perfect idiot from a black pole or something like that. Yeah. I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, natural beasts, natural brute beasts, what advantage what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow. For tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Corrupt good manners. Evil communications. The way you speak, yes. Cursing and that stuff. But communication, communication involves scripturally, involves more than just words. Okay? It's a walking of your talk. With so many can put on a facade, but see, the four walls and the ceiling and the floor... That's the, that's the telltale judge. The person you are in secret where no one is watching will eventually come out for all to see. Excuse me. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. See, Paul was, uh, Paul was against sin, obviously. But remember Romans chapter 7. Paul's like, I can't stop sinning. But he was against sin, as I am. 
and as you saint ought to be. It's as if these guys are for sin. Hmm. Sure would feel that. Sure would seem that way, wouldn't it? Hmm? And now, now go to go back. Uh, go to excuse me. Second Peter, chapter two, verses eighteen and nineteen. And through philosophy and vain deceit, rudiments of the world, and where about it? Okay. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. How could a saved man or woman still remain, reside amongst sleazy believism? Dear brother, have you, you, you figured it out why you're having so many problems with so many people, right? Amen. Right there. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Well, they promised them liberty. <laughs> they themselves are the servants of corruption. For, who, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. And you can go to Romans chapter 6, 15 and 16 and read that on your own time. Okay? But the thief. The thief. Proverbs 29, verse 24. Whoso is partner with a thief, hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing and bereath it not. Yes, John chapter 10. John chapter 10, 7 and 12. <laughs> then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Yeah, and you boot the door. That, that, that was brilliant. That's brilliant. Then again, you never counted on anyone calling you on that. <laughs> All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And go in, in is the body of Christ, and out, redemption of the purchased possession, and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hiring, hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep. And leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. No, they're all about themselves, man. They're all about themselves. Back to Proverbs 29, verse 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord, shall be safe. Uh, look across the page at Proverbs 28, verses 25 and 26. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Hmm. But whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. Verses 12. On to verse 13. I. Even I am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And of the son of man which shall be made of grass. See, you get a lot of these guys who's like, I'm not afraid of anybody, but yet they would cower at the Jesuit order. They would cower at men such as the Jesuits. 
because uh, especially with these coadjutors, remember, the Jesuit is trained to see their superior as God. On to Francis, Sosa is his God. That's according to Jesuit doctrine itself. Okay? You Catholics are taught to see your priest as another Christ. You're taught to see Francis, who is the puppet, as God on earth. So, and a lot of these guys, who's like, I ain't afraid of nothing, and they're crazy brave, okay? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, their fear is all carnal. Ultimately, in one form or another. Because, you got to remember, it is a carnal fear to fear death. Especially if you're a lost coadjutor, knowing where you're going to go. That's why, hey, it's your best life. You only have today. We're just living for today. Hey, the Bible even says that. But see, these guys tell you that so you may indulge in your sin and corrupt yourselves. While a saint tells you that in regard like you're going to give an account of yourself to the Lord. Uh, you don't know if you're going to walk out your door and a piano going to fall on your head. Whereas the other, it's like, hey, live it up. Live it up. Don't worry about it. That's why... That's why I'm not afraid of men. <laughs> I don't fret men much. Never have. Never really have. Okay, never really have. Nope. Nope. I fear the Lord. I fear the Lord. I, even I am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the Son of Man which shall be made as grass? Reference Isaiah 40. And forgettest the Lord thy Maker that hath stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? Luke 12. Naturally, natural flow into that. Luke 12, 4 and 5. Not Corinthians. Luke 12, 4 and 5. Luke 12, 4 and 5. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. Now see, the Jesuits never forgive nor forsake. They kill you, they're going to go after your family. Why do you, where do you think the mafia gets that? Where do you think the mafia got its idea in, in the first place from the Jesuit order? There is arguments that during the actual Roman times that the mafia was... There, yeah, okay, but still that construct, okay, it's Roman, okay, perfected by the Jesuit order, okay, by secret societies, okay. The Omerta Oath, the Omerta Oath, the thing that the Italian Mafia dudes take, have you ever, I, have you ever compared that with the Jesuit Extreme Oath? You, you can find, now there are varying things of it, whereas the extreme oath of the Jesuits is usually says the same thing. I remember the Jesuit extreme oath is still, as, I, as far as I'm uh, aware, in the congressional records. As far as I'm aware. But uh, if you could get a thing of the omerta of the Italian mafia and compare it with the extreme oath of the Jesuits, Wow! It's like, whoa, dude! That, yeah. <laughs> I wonder where they get this from. Okay? But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8, just one verse. Isaiah 8. Verse 13, Isaiah 8, not Proverbs, Isaiah 8, 13. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. 
Every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. And he can throw you into hell. And you know why a lot of you are going to go to hell? Because you chose yourself over him. You. You. Put yourself in hell. You. He's like, hey, you reject the gospel? You regret you uh, reject so great salvation that is in our Lord Jesus Christ? You want to be your own God, live your life as a devil, and you think on your deathbed you're going to recant and get to heaven? You've made your bed. You put yourself in hell. You do. And and then see some of these guys also too trying to justify sin. It's like, well, Paul never talked about the fear of the Lord. Really? Okay, here's two of them. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter five. Mark these because I'm sure some, I'm sure some of you have run into some of these Christians. Like, Paul never talked about the fear of the Lord. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Terror. Terror. You know, John the Apostle fell down at the Lord's feet as he was dead. But Christianity, God loves you. No, he doesn't. You reject Christ. God's love is not for you. God's love is at Calvary, the cross. God does not, present tense, love the Christ-rejecting sinner. He does not. That is a lie. That is a disgusting satanic lie. Which most people, not all, hardly not all, but most people have, you know, uh, like Neil deGrasse, um, a lot of the self-theists are like, oh, wait, 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 dude, wait. You're telling me God loves me unconditionally, yet he's going to put me in hell. Okay. Okay. But... Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. They walk their talk. The person they were uh, within the four walls, ceiling, and floor was the same one that you would see because it's the one person in Christ. Oh, and Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Paul never talked about the fear of the Lord. Yeah. 15 on the 21 in Ephesians 5. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools who say in their heart there is no God, but as wise, fearing the Lord, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. See, you can die at any moment. But see, these Christians, especially those that are mixed up with the flavor of sleazy believism, it's like, hey, live it up. Don't worry. You believe and receive. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't do that. But don't worry if you do. Just go ahead. Live your life. Enjoy yourself. They're being too extreme. See, they push the you only have today to justify you doing that which is ungodly. Whereas the saint tells you, you only have today to justify the scripture. Like, hey, at any given moment, you can walk outside that door of yours and a piano can boom, fall on your head. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? It's over. It's like them poor dudes that went down from poor. They paid a lot of money for that. To go down on that Titan sub, remember that? Sinking submarine. That that's yes. This the the Titan thing that was made out of fiberglass, basically. Or no, 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 what was it made out of? Not fiberglass. Oh, oh, some kind of a composite. I can't think of it. But it it, it like folded in on itself, and those guys died within the twinkling of an eye. Oh, imagine their shock. They're sitting there in that little tube. Next thing you know, it's like, uh-oh. 
See, that's the difference. That's the difference. Okay. That, that, that's, that's the difference, dear people. Okay. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, where is, wherein is excess, but be filled with the capital S Spirit. Okay? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. That's why when saints get together in fellowship, the dynamic is different than that atrocious live stream with these devils trying to one-up each other and whatnot, and you got the one guy and a drunk lady on there. It's like, give me a break, dude. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And who is God save the Lord? The <laughs> guy's like, says to fear God, not the fear of the Lord. <laughs> Someone actually emailed me that. Someone actually emailed. It says to fear God, not to fear the Lord. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> go, go, go Hey, hey. I know this one guy. Go ahead. Roll you up another one. Have, enjoy your life, pal. Yeah, you, you get, you get that petty. You get that nitpicky to defend your sin. So, well, is it the fear of God? Fear of God it doesn't say the fear of the Lord. Who is God but the Lord? The, but see, that, that's that's the that's the level. That's the mind of these people. These people, Christians. People who are not saved. Are all Christians not saved, Brad? No. Unfortunately, there are saints who want to label themselves with that stigma. That's your problem. So well, that's not a big deal, really. How, how much How much out there... Do, do, you, you, you're, you just do your stuff here on YouTube, don't you? That's a, this is where you get fed. huh? That's it. You don't get out there at all, do you? Do you? Yeah, you, you, you harbor around this, this plastic. And you get all your stuff from online. You don't get outside the door, do you? Do you? Do you? Yeah, yeah give me a break. Proverbs, going to go back to Proverbs. Go back to Proverbs 29. Let's finish this up. Still got quite a bit to go. So, <laughs> Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. I, I closed the scriptures. Proverbs 29. Let's pick up at verse 26. Many seek the ruler's favor. But every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. Every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. And an unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright right in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Verse 22, an angry man stirreth up strife. The furious man aboundeth in transgression. Verse 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 on verse 18. And see, the, the whole live streaming community of Christianity, they're all, I don't believe one of them is saved. I really don't. I really don't. And the ones that are, are waking up to like, wait a minute, they're, 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 wait, there's something wrong here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because think about it. These live streaming Christians that welcome all comers, that's whoredom. That's whoredom. Okay? 
be not unequally yoked together. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to the close. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with be, be la el? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Be la el. Three syllables. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from, amongst them, uh, from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Psalm 128. Psalm 128. Psalm 128. Psalm 128. See, when you got these people coming to you, it's like, don't worry about it. You, you, you only have today. So today, get involved in as much devilment as you can. And don't worry about it because you just believe and receive. There's something they're not putting into that. Because, hey, you only have today. The latter end. And see, these poor people that are misguided and who want to believe in that ridiculousness as easy believism, they think that they're going to go to heaven. And you're not. You're not. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive, thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children, and peace upon Israel. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. And Christianity perpetuates the fear of man. And they try, they mockingly try to disguise it as a form of the fear of the Lord, but it isn't. It isn't. I mean, it really isn't. See, you do only have today, dear friend. But as it is appointed on the men once to die, and after this the judgment, see, when you die, you're going to have to give an account to the Lord. And there's only one of two destinations. To be with the Lord or to be in hell. Okay? There's only two destinations. There isn't an option C. We tell you that today is, you could, you could die at any moment. Okay? You can die at any moment. You need to consider what? Your latter end. See, this is going to die. The sin suit is going to die. And the sin suit, skin suit, is what the devil and his ministers of righteousness are all about. Okay? That's what they're all about. The saint comes to you. You have only today... If you die today, you're gonna and you, you're not saved. You're gonna go to hell. These devils come to you. It's like, hey, you only got today, so make this day count. Go, go out there and get it as drunken and snuckered as you can. Go ahead and watch anything you want. Live it up. Live it up for today. Excusing devilment, justifying sin. Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. And see, someone who has walked with the Lord for a while, 
should be more concerned with that rather than rubbing it into other people's faces about how successful you've been and how long you have been doing this and that you're too good anymore to share with people scripture. I've seen a lot of people who have claimed to have been saved for years and years and years and the longer they go, the worse they get. I pray to the Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father, I never want to be like that. Never. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verse 11 on the 20. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in keeping his commandments, different dispensation, and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, full of days, now you've done, you, you feel like Paul for all the people that you've led to the Lord, right? And has built goodly houses and dwelt therein. Goodly houses, huh? See, a lot of these Christians of longevity seem to have forgotten from whence they came. Whereas yesterday, I remember from I remember where I came from. I remember that I was going to hell. I remember that there was no hope for me except the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. His death, burial, and resurrection. That blood that got behind the ears, see. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, get all the, you know, look at like the MacArthur's and all these guys who, who get all this stuff and then they, they stretch themselves, you know. Have your summer and winter house, huh? And, yeah, and have your Maserati and your whatever, huh? And thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God. Well, I've been doing this for who? How many of you? Who are you? Blah, 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 blah. Bye -bye. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go tell your deceived flock of how great you are, and how, how noble, and how, how virtuous you are. Right. 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 <laughs> you, you, you sure do show it there, bud which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Did he, though? You know, i got to say, one of the more arrogant people that I had ever seen was that Sam Spit. Sam Gipp. Uh, I, I watched for a very... And that was the thing that got me. It was just like, dude, I can't, I can't, I can't handle this guy. Ruckman. Ruckman. Okay? Ruckman in his later years. Okay? Ruckman in his later years was, I mean, didn't rub it in people's faces at every incident that he could. But in his latter years, you could tell that he was getting off on the fact that people were idolizing him. And it's like, amen, buddy, amen, amen. And he was enjoying, you know, raveling up the crowd and whatnot. But that's Sam Gipp. That's Sam Gipp. Ten percent is what's required. After that, it's when you're really giving. It's like, I don't have a pride problem. Sam Spitt said that. He actually, I don't have a pride problem. <laughs> With me. Guys, if anyone says to you, I don't have a pride problem, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? Uh, Paul, uh, there was given, lest I be exalted for all the revelations, there was given me a, a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Uh, what does that mean? Paul knew he had a pride problem. <laughs> and you got Sam Spit. I don't have a pride problem. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, 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 Sam Spit. Sam Spit. That that guy really got to me. Like I said, that's the reason why I mean I did, and I listened to him very little just a little bit. He did a seven part thing about why the authorized version uh, which was decent, which was. Okay? But uh, listening to that guy talk, the bravada, the pride that's in him. Uh, uh, dude, dude, if I, you know, go away. Go away. Verse 15. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the, fl the rock of flint, who led thee in the wilderness with manna. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to, to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and my and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he sware unto thy fathers as it, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do all, at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods like yourself, and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish as the nations which the Lord destroyed destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient on the voice to the voice of the Lord your God. Deuteronomy thirty two. Deuteronomy thirty two. See again, the latter end. See, these guys are going forward assuming because they just believe and receive no repentance, no contrition, no fear of the Lord. But hey, like, that, 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 okay, I believe I'm saved and just go on living your life as a devil. But hey, I believe, therefore I am. <laughs> you know, I, I find the comparison with the gender thing it's like these guys who think they're a woman all of a sudden because they think they are. A lot of these Christians, they think they're going to heaven just because they think they are. Okay? It's disturbing, to say the least. Deuteronomy 32, verses 28 on to verse 33. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. And that's why with YouTube, how it's so geared and engineered uh, at the young, the youth, the facelift, the unsagging sin suits, okay? Uh, uh, youth is kin, thin is in, okay? Not considering your latter end. And see, when these Christians, like you, have, you, you know, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. See, they're using it to justify sin. We, the saints, like, yeah, you don't know if tomorrow you're going to die. You don't know if 10 minutes you're going to die. What fear of the Lord ought that to instill upon you? And the fear of the Lord is life, Okay. Doesn't mean that you stay hidden within your home. No, 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 no. But see, the fear of the Lord will dissolve the fear of man. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their capital our rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up? For their lowercase our rock is not as our capital our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. You shall know them by their fruits. For their vine is the vine of Sodom. And of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons. Dragons. You know like uh, 
people are like, well, the Komodo dragon. Dragons. Devils. Okay? And the cruel venom of asps. All tie in with Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. See, again, dear people, Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. You're all going to die. You're all going to die. And Satan has you so warped in living in today. It's like that you only live once mentality, which is one of the stupidest things. Uh, stupid. Okay? You only live once, so live like a devil. Christianity comes around. You only have today, so live it up. Yeah. Yeah. Romans 14, 11 and 12. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We the saints, we give our account at the judgment seat of Christ. You lost people. You're going to do the errors eventually at the great white throne to be cast in the hellfire. It's not funny. There's only two options. And see, the one that will tell you, yeah, you, you only have today. You only have today. So live it up. They go, they go to Proverbs 27. They go to Proverbs 27. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth. A stranger, and not thine own lips. A stone is heavy and the sand weighty. Sand. You know that parable where the Lord was talking about uh, if someone builds his house on a rock, the floods which are, uh, are reminiscent of people. You can read that in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. Okay? All right? Built his house on a rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. The floods came and the house stood because it was founded on a rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. But those who built their foundation on the sand, sand is a bunch of little pebbles, okay, shifting sand. The floods came, the waters, people came, and that house collapsed because it was built on sand, okay? A stone is heavy and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. Hmm. It's not that something tomorrow. Then you go to you go to James four. Then you go to James four thirteen on the seventeen, right? James four thirteen on the seventeen. Go to now, and now this is in context of the time of Jacob's trouble. Got to remember that Hebrews and the book of James doctrinally is written for the Hebraic Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. This is our instruction in righteousness. Go to now, ye that say, go, go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. I'm saved because I just believe. I'm saved because I'm a Calvinist. I'm saved because I'm a Catholic. And ye ain't saved. I, you know, all things are lawful for me. You're being too extreme. Why can't I watch Hollywood movies? Huh? Why can't I be like the world? Hey, God, God gave us everything to enjoy. You know, most of the times you, you run into those people um, like, okay, <laughs> here's to you, pal. There you go. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, enjoy your life. I, I, I'm going to go talk to someone else. 
Now, dispensational difference. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Meaning good works. And you tie that in with James chapter 2, because the book of James is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of James' trouble. See, during the time of Jacob's trouble, they don't know the day or the hour. They'll know the year, though, because after the redemption of the purchased possession, seven years. And in Proverbs, boast not thyself in the morrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. See, these Christians, again, come to you and tell that to you in order to justify sin. When the saints, when the saint does it, to remind you, it's like, hey, you could die today. And you know what I've encountered? Some of these really crafty guys will go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 9, to try to justify this living for today thing as if to just throw off all things and go at it. Philippians 4, verses 4 on to verse 9. How many of you have encountered this one? When you talk to one of these Christians, they come to here. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Moderation. Right there ought to be a tipping stone for you guys, but right here, right here. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. They stop. Usually they'll stop at 6. Some will go to, to verse 7, and what do they do? They'll try to twist this. How? Be careful for nothing. I I prayed to God that I could leave my husband and go find uh, a new guy while I'm still married. And then you're a Christian. I prayed to God about it. He said he, he he's okay with me getting a tattoo, even though I know what it says in Leviticus. Okay? I, I pray to God. I, I know what it says in Romans chapter 1. But uh, love is love, and I'm in love with another, you know, you're a woman, and I'm in love with another woman. Or you're a man, and I'm in love with another man. Love is love. God is love, right? So, hey, you know, don't get, hey, we already read, don't get drunk to excess. But hey, don't worry, go ahead, get drunk. You just believe and receive. Hey, be careful for nothing. Throw it all into the wind. Live like a devil, because you only got today. Live it up. Live it up. See, don't, don't, those guys, they're just being legalistic. Hey, John, what? They're, they're too serious. Why so serious? You ever encountered that one? They come right there. Like, you're, you're just being legalistic. Um, okay. Let's keep reading now to verse 9. It, it, it's like with these putzes. <laughs> Who <laughs> say, I, I, I believe in a post-tribulation rapture because of Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Post-tribulation mean that, you know, the, the Christians are going through the great tribulation and then they go up and then come right back down. At the <laughs> That's stupid. But these guys, they'll go to this like, well, I, I believe in post-tribulation rapture because of Second Thessalonians and... They stop at a certain place and they don't keep reading. Okay? <laughs> that happens a lot with people who are trying to um, who are trying to deceive you through scriptures. Okay? <laughs> Handling the word of God deceitfully. Okay? A lot of times they go to it's like let me show you the example. Okay, they, they'll take you to a second. I lay in a post tribulation rapture because I read a second Thessalonians chapter 2. <laughs> and, and they, um, and they, you know, they, they'll read from one on that, they'll come to three and they'll go to three and four. Okay, 
Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That's been happening for centuries. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. So say the, the Antichrist got to be revealed first. So it's post-tribulation rapture. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. They usually stop there. But see, if you were to keep reading to say, um, to like verse 7, uh, no, excuse me, to verse 8. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Jesus Christ, Eric, is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. He's not going anywhere. The he is the body of Christ. We, the body of Christ, get taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. The wicked. Who is that? That man is in the son of perdition. Okay? Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, meaning his second coming. So these guys who say to you, I believe in the post-tribulation rapture because of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, they'll stop at verse 4 at the most. They don't continue reading. Just like these guys who want to say, hey, you only have today, so live it up, man. Come on, man. Don't worry about it. You just believe in receiving it. Yeah, you shouldn't do that, but don't worry about it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Revel in your vomit. Yeah. Yeah, see? Just God loves you. <laughs> just believe and receive. You can you can go to heaven and live like a devil too. And they come here. Well, you haven't experienced this one yet. See, this is what happens when you encounter a Christian who thinks they... <laughs> it's, like, it's like they think they know something. How you deal with those people? When did the New Testament begin? Leave it there. Eight out of ten people you ask that question to. Christian. Eight out of ten. There are some that have that and can know how to answer that. That you can work with. That you can work with one of these Christians. You can. You can. Okay? You can work. The Lord is the one who does the working with, obviously. That's not what I'm saying. But it's like, okay, if someone, if a Christian, one of these Christians, at least like, okay, Scripture tells me that it began with the death of the testator. It's like, okay. All right. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? But, they come to here. Like, hey, you only got today. And to justify it, they read here in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, and they'll stop. So see, live it up. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are pure, Psalm 19. I'll get my wife in here. This is one of her favorite psalms. Uh, 7 unto 11, Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. The statutes of the Lord are, re are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. And see, Christianity comes along, it's like, hey, you're being legalistic. That, that, that these, these are saints are stunting your growth. No. No. See, you Christians are interjecting death by throwing it into the wind, coming here to try to justify sin, and not continuing reading. 
is what is pure, what is good. See, and Christianity tells you that good is evil and evil is good. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, what though, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, there is none good but God. Lovely, huh? All those stones that the anointed cherub has, huh? Why, you know, sin looks so appealing and good. It's death. It's death. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. See, we are to live our lives absent of the fear of man and live within the Lord as ambassadors for Christ being a walking, living example of his grace. And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And the fear of the Lord will absolve your fear of man, that you can live unto the Lord. And what a life it is. But see, Christianity tells you that a, a life lived in the fear of the Lord is constricting, and it is! God doesn't want you messed up with that! But see... Christianity comes, hey, don't worry about it. You only got today. Psalm 71. Psalm 71. Psalm 71. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For thou art my hope. In Jesus Christ, he is our hope. O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. You're alive today because the Lord has allowed it. Period. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. They look at you that you don't go to the same excess of riot. It's like, what a strange cat. Oh, you're weird, you know that? <laughs> God, it's like, you're, you're a Christian. Aren't you supposed to be telling me, you know, God loves me and that God, you know, so it's okay to... <laughs> I told that guy, it's like, no, God does not love you. Okay, no, he doesn't. God does not, present tense, love the Christ-rejecting sinner. He doesn't. Muslims, self-theists can figure that one out themselves. Okay? Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. Thy praise and thy honor. Which people can very easily blur the line of boasting themselves through the Lord rather than boasting the Lord through themselves. That's a very fine line that can be very easily blurred unless you pay attention to it. And you know how you do that? Usually by self-examination. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. For mine enemies speak against me, and they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together, saying, God hath forsaken him. Persecute and take him, for there is none to deliver him. O oh God, be not far from me, O oh my God. Make haste for my help. That's my text message or email. Let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries to my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hope, my hurt. 
but I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. And Jesus Christ is our hope. He's given me today. See, if I die today, I'm going to go home and be with the Lord Jesus Christ. So none of you got out there is going to scare me. Nothing. Nothing. My mouth shall shew forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. Hold your place. Hold your place. Hold your place. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 again. First current, uh, first, no, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. My mouth shall shew forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day, for I know not the numbers thereof. Verses 17 and 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Every single one of you saints is in the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And here's what these lost devils don't understand. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Go back to Psalm 71, verse 15 again. My mouth shall shew forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day, for I know not the numbers thereof. I know not the numbers thereof. See, as an example of the Lord's mercy and grace, not as a means to justify sin, which Christianity does. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even thine only. Justifying the Lord through yourself, not yourself through the Lord. With so many of these guys that have been there, done that, I've been saved for years and years and years. They end up justifying themselves, magnifying themselves to the Lord. That line is too conveniently blurred. O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not until I have shewed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone to come. Thy strength. Not yours. Thy strength. Oh, I'm too good to guide you through the scriptures on anything. You got to do it. And yes, you have to research the scriptures yourself every day. Amen, amen, amen. But you know, sometimes we got to help some people out with that. Hmm? Hmm? See, the longer you go, the more humble we ought to be. But with a lot of these Christians, the longer they go, the more pompous and arrogant they seem to be. Sam Gipp is a great example of that. Kent Helvin, he's not even saved. I don't think Sam Gipp is saved either. How can anyone, a saint, say, I think God uses free grace? Or what do you say? No, I think God God uses easy believism. Yeah, the little G God of this world. Thy righteousness also, O God, is very high. Who has done great things, O God, who is like unto thee? <laughs> Thou which hast shewed me great and sore troubles, shalt quicken me again, make me alive, 
and shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Resurrection. Resurrection. Hold your place there. Deuteronomy chapter 34. Thank you. <laughs> Five and on seven. Deuteronomy 34. So, and remember how we read about in Jude how Satan and Michael disputed about the body of Moses? Nobody, I, I've, you know, some of the uh, uh, Hasidim, uh, the ultra Orthodox Hebraic Jews, claim it's like, well, we know where Moses was buried. Uh, you lie. According to this, no, you don't. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab. Who buried Moses? Who buried Moses? People will argue, well, Michael did, right? I don't think so. I think the Lord himself buried Moses. And he buried him in the valley of the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. And I have heard some of the Hasidim make mentions like we know exactly where Moses is buried. Like they also say we know exactly where the Ark of the Covenant is. I think perhaps, see, you say something like that, you're calling God a liar. And Moses was 120 years old, that 120 uh, life expectancy thing, okay? And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated, okay? Now go to Philemon. 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 Philemon verses 8 and 9. Philemon. Verses 8 and 9. Listen to this. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient. Hey, I've been saved for decades. I've done this. I've done that. So, you, you should. Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such an one as Paul the aged, and thou also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Yes, Paul spake as a fool under duress. But see, I have seen, some of you know who I'm making a reference on to, who like to throw at you at every incident, their credentials. <laughs> and that, that's so, and so, and I mean, here you go talking about, you know, you didn't go to a Bible college, praise the Lord, but your credentials, whereas Christianity wants a piece of paper as credentials, you are rubbing into people's faces your credentials that you've been there, done that. Paul did that under duress. A lot of Christians do that to boast themselves. 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 on verse 8. For the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry by boasting to everybody how long you've been doing this. Why don't you just shut up and let your actions speak louder than your words? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Not by the hearing of a certain individual, but by the word of God. Yes, God uses that certain individual. See, these people, their ways are movable. How can us not know them? And the level that some of these people will go to justify themselves is astounding 
full of wonder. Okay? For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but on to all them also that love his appearing. But yet, you only got today. See, the eternal mindset is what the saint, when they say, hey, Okay, you only have today. You could die. You know, where are you going to spend eternity? The Christian. Hey, you only got today. So live it up, buddy. Roll you up another one. Back to Psalm 71. Picking up. Let's read verse 20 again. Thou which hast shewed me great and sore troubles shalt quicken me again and shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. I will also praise thee with the psaltery, even thy truth, O my God. Unto thee will I sing with the harp, O thou Holy One of Israel. Speaking to each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, and my soul which thou hast redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day. For they are confounded, for they are brought unto shame that seek my hurt. There is no peace for the wicked. Psalm 90. Psalm 90. Psalm 90, 10 unto 12. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. Two, four, six, seven, seventy. Seventy. Okay? People can live older than seventy, yes, but as a generalized thing, okay? The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, two, four, six, eight, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. You know, a lot of people like to t go to this and point to the redemption of the purchased possession. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, yeah... Yeah, you you yeah, you can kind of fit that in there, but looking at the verse for it is soon cut off and we fly away, meaning death. Um uh, I was a, I, I I was always a big proponent. It's like, hey, Psalm 90:10, hey, there's a redemption of the purchase possession. Yeah, but uh, I hey, if someone's gonna be hard nosed about it, it's like whatever, okay. But textually, contextually, contextually, uh, let's continue. Who knows the power of thine anger? And then they'll go to see, and it fits right with the thing about the redemption of the purchase possession, tying it into this. We fly away, the power of thine anger, the time of Jacob's trouble. I get it. I get it. There, there, in the Old Testament, if you want to prove uh, the concept of the redemption of the purchased possession, they didn't know about it back during the Old Testament times. Remember that. Remember that. There were types thereof, the ark and that kind of stuff. There are better, stronger places than Psalm 90. That's what I'm getting at. But let's continue. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Proverbs 19. 
What happens? Huh? What happens? What happens? Huh? Proverbs 19, 18 under 21. Chasten thy son while there is hope. Let not thy soul spare for his crying. A man of great wrath shall suffer punishment. For if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. But fools make a mock at sin, don't they? Don't they? Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. You're going to die. You're going to die. And your belief of the judgment that's coming is irrelevant. <laughs> it's totally irrelevant. That's, that's just the way it is, see. Isaiah 41, 19 under 24. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shita tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, and the pine, and the box tree together, that they may see, and know, and consider, and understand together, that the hand of the Lord hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Produce your causes, saith the Lord, and bring forth your strong reasons, saith the King of Jacob. Every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Huh? Some of you actually think you're going to be able to debate with God at the great white throne of judgment? <laughs> wow. Let them bring them forth and shew us what shall happen. Let them shew the former things, what they be, that we may consider them and know the latter end of them. Or declare us things for to come. Shew the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods. Ah. You have had a dream, right? You've had a dream. I have seen, I have seen. Yeah. Yea, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold. Ye are of nothing. And your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooseth you, an abomination, who chooseth you. John 8, John chapter 8, verses 42 on 44. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. <laughs> Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work of naught. If this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it is of God, okay, where is that at? Huh? Where is that at? That's in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. <coughs> Verses 38 on to verse 39. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men. And let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. Just believe and receive. You're elect. You're not elect. Go to the church that Christ founded. And it will come to naught. 
But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found. That's haply, not happily, by the way. Okay? Lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. Isaiah 47. Verses 6 on to verse 13. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst shew them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. Look at what's happening today. The uh, retirement age is getting um, lifted, uh, raised up, you know. Um, Everything is geared toward the youth, okay? And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever. Reference, I believe, on the, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. Come with me. Today I have paid my vow. Come, let us solace ourselves with loves. Loves appears twice in Scripture. You go to King James Bible online, you'll see three. You gotta remember, one of them is not in the text of Scripture itself. Loves in text of Scripture, which is inspired, appears twice. Let's solace ourselves with loves. I'm talking about the whore in Proverbs 7, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. Yeah. Therefore, hear now this thou that art given to pleasures, O oh, you Christians, given to pleasures. Just believe and receive, and hey, you only got today, so live it up. Give him the pleasures. That dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am. I'm saved because I just believe. No repentance, no brokenness, no contrition, no fear of the Lord. No, those are requirements. <gasps> but no, you just believe and receive. That saith in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. And of course, look in the reference, the, the, a reference to Revelation 18, verse 7. Talking about Rome, to tie in there. But thee, uh, neither, uh, I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment and one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge it hath perverted thee. Check your margin for our Ezekiel 28 reference. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You are your own God. You are, you are because you say you are, huh? Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments. And with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. And at the end of the day, you Christians, <coughs> thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counselors. Let now the astrologers, like Robert Breaker, 
and these guys were all about the eclipse. <laughs> the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators, stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter two. Second Peter, chapter two, verses twenty. Now, unto the close. See, you hear the true gospel and you turn from it. You're no longer innocent. You're guilty. Okay? You've heard the truth. And see, the gospel that you hear from the sleazy believers is not the true gospel. That's not the true Jesus. But see, nonetheless, you know, most of you guys know, uh, of course, I mean, I mean, the saltiest are a great example. They know what they're doing is not right in the eyes of God. Okay? But, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through just the knowledge, knowing of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Because you heard the truth. But there was no, see, knowledge. Knowledge is the result of what? Wisdom. And what wisdom is in them. Okay? The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Yeah. Because you heard the truth. It's like these devils who are causing all these problems with people. They know what the actual gospel is, but they have decided to go after Satan. And see, because they know up here what the actual gospel is, they have this warped mentality. It's like, I'm going to live my life in devilment all this time, and when I'm about to die, because I know the truth, I'm going to actually... You. <laughs> Hope them cigarettes make you cough there, bud. Okay? For it had been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered on to them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog, male, is returned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her, female, wallowing in the mire. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, um, you you uh, you know, while you kids out there are reveling in the cosmetic, you have only today. So let's let, dude. You're eventually going to die. Those tattoos are going to sag. People who admire, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Judge not on the outward appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And isn't it a funny, haha, <laughs> coinky dink, which don't exist, that Christianity is all about the visual stimuli. Lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Now see, you hear this. You're being warned. Come, let us reason together, you and I. I don't know how much longer I got. But I'm going to tell you. As long as the Lord has me alive, I'm going to shoot forth his righteousness and his praise. And God forbid I become like one of these guys who boasts themselves through the Lord and not the Lord through themselves. Thank you for watching if you do.